Hey there. All right. You can keep that. I got you. Uh, appreciate you. All righty. Hey, I appreciate that. Thanks, man. You too. Well, sound is speeding, and welcome to the Speed Bubbles podcast. This is episode 15. I am just leaving set. Sorry about the garbage security camera that I'm using yet again. The Wise, what is it? Wise Cam V3, whatever this thing is called. I don't know. My GPS has totally got me messed up. So you got, you're going to get to see a very, very weird opening of me leaving <laughs> crew parking, which is at this uh, parking deck today. And uh, this is, in case you have not figured it out yet, episode 15 of the Speed Bumps podcast, the podcast that takes place during my drive home from set. And I don't know if this is the right way I should be going because my GPS is not connected. Anyway, yes, this is right. Okay, good. Not lucky there. And I'm going to point out that I am once again recording on the Wise Cam V3. And if you notice the, the image right here, it is very delayed. In the screen here, I have not even held up this tablet just yet. And I'm driving down the road, blabbing away. So this is what I have to deal with. When I line up a shot, I'm like, okay, I gotta wait 30 seconds for the thing to refresh and, and finally show me doing something. So that way, you see, I haven't even lifted up the tablet in the shot just yet. But this is what I'm having to deal with when I line up a shot for speed bumps. And it's too dark outside, so I'm using the security camera. Now, yes, I could use a different camera because the quality is pretty ghastly but what i will say here is that uh it is providing a picture for me to drive home with and it does have night vision color night vision at that which is kind of cool um jeez come on traffic anyway i am currently on my drive home from set which is oh so wonderful trying to deal with uh, rush hour traffic and all the sun has not although the sun has not completely gone down just yet it is mostly down and it's going to be all the way down here in a few minutes so that's when I get the, the joys of um, driving in darkness. But, you know, the camera actually does a pretty decent job of picking me up. Now, the image that you're seeing is recorded on the micro SD card that is internal. And what's crazy is that the thing keeps telling me that it's shutting off. It keeps shutting off after a few minutes. So I'm hoping and praying that I have all the files on the internal micro SD card because I keep every time I see it disappear the recording light disappear i say okay great let me actually hit record again and hopefully i haven't missed anything even though the camera is set to automatically record at all times so let me go ahead and get into the episode but i tell you i don't have a question this week so what am i going to do i am recording audio right that's good <laughs> this is just a great episode um what i am going to be doing this week since i do not have a question is i'm going to tell a tips of the trade success story where i was on set one day i came up with a solution or basically i don't want to say save the day but yet i did oh yeah sure come on over dude it's whip right in front of me um where i did something on set that was dude what is wrong with you guys okay so anyway a story that took place on set one day where I came up with a solution that was probably not the norm that people were like, oh, wait a minute, that's not really a normal story um, or a solution, but it came up with something that was actually pretty cool. So I'm going to start off by telling one of those kinds of stories. Now that I am merging in with traffic, let me actually get into that story. The Atlanta Archives building was a building that held Atlanta's archives for the longest time. And then when they retired the building because it was sinking and they were going to have to uh, implode it at some point, they decided that it was just going to sit vacant for a bit. So they cleared out the archives, cleared out the, the business as a, as a general rule, and then decided not to do anything with it. But then when the tax incentives came to Georgia, they started using it as a filming location quite often. And everything from Marvel movies to... A few of the movies that I worked on that were smaller, like even Kill the Messenger and stuff like that, um, we ended up shooting there. And the archives buildings was was really cool because it was kind of creepy and all the archives, you know, shelves were still there. They were basically just vacant shelves. But before they imploded it, it was sinking. And we ended up uh, having a, a situation there a couple of times where we were parking and crew parking and you could get into the lot and then your car would kind of sink down a little bit and go up into the parking lot and parts of the ceiling were starting to uh had sunk down a little bit the concrete that was you know you were basically parking underneath the building and so we were um 
we were basically parking in that building, which was kind of interesting. But when it was imploded, I remember it was very, very, you know, heartbreaking for a lot of Atlantans because we remember seeing the building there for the longest time. And when they imploded it, they took this building completely down. And uh, you're looking at it on the screen even as we speak. I, I'm playing a little picture-in-picture uh, picture there that we can still continue to see me. Woohoo! While uh, I'm showing this footage. Now, the reason I'm showing this is because the air in that building was extremely loud when you were in some areas and it was non-existent in other areas. So if you were shooting in a location that was, you know, you, that was made up to look a certain way or sound a certain way or definitely sound, uh, look a certain way, then you might have a, a situation where the air conditioner, all the air conditioning for the entire place was coming out of this one vent that was nailing you in this one room. And that was be the location that they were deciding to shoot in, of course. Why would it not be? And so we had to come up with solutions. And one of the solutions, the very first time I was um, at the archives building was the vent that was in the drop ceiling above us, which was about a two by two foot drop ceiling you know uh, it was like it had little squares in it but we put some lights up in the ceiling and uh and you know had them hanging down but it was still the the one little hose that was coming into this one vent was just blasting us it was really really irritating so one of the things we were doing while looking at it is said why don't we see if we can get a blank tile a, an empty tile you know just a regular drop ceiling tile and get on a ladder, push the ceiling in, shove that air conditioning hose over to the side, and then replace it with a ceiling tile in the ceiling. And we did. And it surprisingly knocked down the decibel level quite a bit. It was really cool, actually. So today, we did the same thing. We were shooting in a different building, obviously, because it, it you know the Atlanta Car Archives building has imploded. But um, the uh, building that we were shooting in today had some air conditioning vents that were extremely loud. And I took a real quick little video here to show you how loud it was. Now it's kind of hard to hear exactly how loud it is from watching the video, but I will tell you this, when you're shooting directly underneath it, it is kind of loud. It is pretty loud, especially when people are talking very loud. So what we ended up doing is the same thing. I had the utility. Uh, well, we had three scenes, in fairness. We had three scenes today. One, uh, scene one and scene three had no dialogue in it. So I was like, fine, do your worst. But scene two did have dialogue, and it was a woman speaking to another woman. And there was only one woman talking, but we were shooting in a bathroom, and they had three vents that were very loud in there. So what we did is I had my utility get up on a ladder, knock those ceiling tiles, uh, push them up into the roof and replace them with the ceiling tiles. And I'll tell you, it knocked down the decibel level probably by a good 12 dB. And if you know anything about sound and how decibel levels work, every time you double the pressure, the sound pressure levels in the, in the room or you cut them by half, then it's basically a change in six decibels. So if you go from full decibel level to drop to six dB, drop down by 6 dB, that's about half the, the sound pressure level in the room. And you drop it again in half, so it's a quarter of what it was, that's a 12 dB drop. So the level had decreased by, you know, all the way down to about, um, the noise had, had, had decreased by about 12 dB, which is very, very good amount of attenuation. Now, we were able to get the microphones nice and close and play it close, and so the tracks were saved. But I'll tell you, that was one of those solutions that we had come up years ago, probably 13 years ago now in the Atlanta Archives building, and it worked really great again today. So if you're ever in a room that has drop ceilings and you could push the tiles up and, they, and, and you could close up all the ceiling tiles up above you and you can basically take the air conditioning vents, especially the ones that are really noisy, push them up into the ceiling, shove them over to the side, and then replace the actual drop ceiling tiles, then you're gonna have a much reduced decibel level. Now, try to do that on any of the rooms that you're shooting in, and not any of the rooms where like the video village and stuff like that is going to be set up. Now, the other thing is to note, this is if you do not have control over central air. In the Atlanta Archives building, we were on floor like eight or something like that. Today, we were on floor six of a skyscraper downtown in Atlanta. So this is a solution that works well when you do not have access to the controls for the thermostat. 
And in this in the situation today, we had no control over the air in the building. Some rooms were really quiet. Well, not really quiet, but they didn't have working air. Other rooms were really loud because they had multiple of these loud air vents that were blasting down. So this solution works great today, but obviously if you have a thermostat and, and, and climate control and you could actually adjust something there to kill the air, that's a much better solution. Even if you could pull breakers and kill it because you don't have access to the thermostat, you can't do that. If locations gives you the okay to pull the uh, breakers on the, the, the air handler so that way you're not hearing that, that's even that's even better than uh, than you know putting the the ceiling tiles up there because um, a lot less work for you. Let locations have to deal with it later. But I'll tell you, it's a solution that works and for you to keep in your arsenal when you need it. For the pro sound topic I'm going to discuss in this video, I'm going to discuss the importance of air in your audio recording. Now you may say, air? What are you talking about? You mean like sound? needs to travel through something and that's what you mean like it has to travel through air no not exactly air frequencies and if you look at a spectrum a, a frequency spectrum you'll notice that air frequencies start in the five digit area so usually it will show up sometime in the uh, early five digits usually around what is it try to go off a of memory here about 12k roughly up to 16k something like that now you may say okay well that's not really where any of the vocal frequencies lie. You're right, it doesn't. But here's what I will tell you. Even if you can't hear the frequency range very well, you can hear air. And I don't mean in the sense that like, oh, the wind is blowing and it's gonna blow into wind chimes and you're gonna hear that, or wind is gonna be blowing and uh, and you're gonna hear it uh, past your ears or hit your uh, tympanum inside your ears or the, the on the microphone, something like that. No, 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 no. I mean, the actual air has a sound. And I don't mean like the fact that the the actual measurement of, or the, uh, I should say, the, uh, the, the sound volume, rather, of air molecules hitting each other in the air that you're around is approximately negative 24 decibels. That's at least, uh, as I read it, it could be theoretical. But I'm not talking about that either, because that's well below anything that you're going to hear under the noise floor of the room you're in. Even the uh, quietest room in, the, in existence, I believe, is the Microsoft anechoic chamber that's negative 18 dB, if memory serves. If that's the case, it's still like, what, 6 dB lower than that, which means cut the sound pressure level twice more, and then you finally get to where the air frequencies are, imagining or the, uh, the air molecules bumping into each other and the volume that is. Um, but no, I don't mean any of that. If you were to close your eyes, and I'm not going to do it right now because I'm driving down the road. That wouldn't be very safe. If you close your eyes when you're in a room and you listen, you could usually hear how big the room is, right? You're able to hear if it's a close, close-in sounding room. Some people have claustrophobia, and that's actually somewhat driven by the way things sound. If you're in a closet, for example, with the lights out, you can hear that the walls are not very far apart. You can hear that they're very close to you. And it kind of gets creepy because you're like, it feels too close. Like there's something up on you, like a wall. But you know, if you're in a gymnasium and you've ever done like a, you, you, you were like part of a, a school lock-in or a church lock-in, something like that. And you were ever in a very, very big loud room and they kill all the lights at night and it's dark and it's quiet and you listen you can hear a very high pitched noise in the room. That is the air frequencies, the frequencies of the sound in the room that you're in. And it's really cool because you will hear that. It sounds kind of like a constant ringing. Even if you have presbycusis and you, you ha have lost some of your high pitched sounds, you are still able to hear the air frequencies. If you close your eyes in a room, you can get an idea of what that room size is because of the air frequencies. So. I might need to actually do a regular sound speeds video about this at some point. Tell me in the, in the comments below if you want me to do that. Because I'll tell you, it's really a neat thing. If you close your eyes and you have no idea where you are, you can open your eyes and get an idea of the size of room you're in. Not just like because you can hear on the far side of the room, you can hear a little bitty, you know, beeping noise coming from a, a smoke alarm, smoke detector, something like that that's not you know, uh, got a good battery in it or because of 
of a door that's slightly ajar and you can hear the air conditioning coming from uh, you know a little wind tunnel that it's, it's slightly cracked so you hear a little bit of whistling or the door moving around none of that no what i'm referring to is the actual high-pitched sounds that come with air frequencies the, the frequencies that you can't hear except when they're not there you don't really notice them when they're until they're not there i should say you still hear them but it's one of those things where human beings are creatures of deletion we don't really notice something until it's gone or if it's not there then suddenly it is there then we notice that too basically when it, when there is some sort of a change to something that's when we'll notice it um so like if there's a, an air conditioning sound and the location department finally kills it and shuts down the air conditioning all of a sudden you hear go Doo, and it dies you're like oh finally it got quiet everyone notices wow it's been so much quieter or when a sound turns on they're like oh geez listen to that or an airplane shows up you notice that because it's above that threshold that you notice it but the same thing happens with air frequencies when you naturally hear them in the regular mix in the in the in the, the world and then suddenly um they're not there you're like whoa kind of gives you a claustrophobic feeling you don't you suddenly are like wait a minute now what's going on here it doesn't sound right it gives you a feeling like there's something uh, uh not there there's something missing that there's something a little nerve-wracking you'll some uh, some people will actually get really really nervous and they'll they'll start to even get scared because they're suddenly like oh what's what's going on here i, I feel claustrophobic and they'll start to have a little bit of a panic attack that is part of claustrophobia whether you believe it or not is the whole uh, idea of being very tuned into the way it sounds and you lacking those higher pitched frequencies now if you do an audio recording in your closet and you have clothes all around you then you may say this is awesome listen to the, how, how this is going to be totally dead in here i clap and there's no reflections no reverb at all one thing you're going to be lacking is air frequencies if you go into a recording studio that is also dead quiet with a neg with a, a 20 db noise floor and it's really really quiet you're you might actually hear the hiss out of your microphones in a, in a very quiet environment like that even when you are yelling and you have the, the gain set that way you might even still hear it but if that is the case then um sorry i keep looking down because i wanted to make sure it's still recording but if that's the case then you will hear the fact that there's a little bit of high-pitched air frequencies mixed into your recording and it will sound more natural because usually we're in bigger rooms we're used to the way that sounds and it will sound more natural if you play there than you will be if you record your garage band inside of a small room in your house and you cram everybody in there and you put a couple of mics in there not just because of the acoustics and the frequencies of of the the band instruments bouncing off of the closer walls and then bouncing back into your microphone and how the there's no real liveliness to it that's one of the reasons why people like sometimes a lot live albums that take place in a venue you have to have a little bit of reverb you have to have the get the sense that there is life to the room that you not just hear the audience you know yay but you you hear the room and you hear the liveliness coming from various different uh reflections of the instruments as they're bouncing off the walls and everything like that the same kind of thing happens when you're recording your voiceovers when you're recording in a an environment if you give it a little bit of higher air frequencies now that's to say it's not as simple as you just turning on a tone generator and just you know but nailing a, a, a high pitch sound that's not what i mean but what you could try if you wanted to and granted this is theoretical i have not tried this and again i might end up trying this in a video to see if it works but you could take some white noise notch it out to the air frequencies put a little bit of a fade in a little bit of fade out and bring it up just ever so slightly just a little bit to give yourself a little bit of a sense of those air frequencies in your audio recording if you're recording in a small room doing that theoretically is supposed to make it feel like you are in a slightly larger room now that's also to say that that 
you're going to be lacking a lot of reverb. So you might need to also add just a tiniest little bit of reverb to it to make sure that you really sell the effect. Because otherwise you're going to be like, why does it sound so dead? But I hear those air frequencies. It's going to be a little awkward then because it doesn't it's defying physics at that point. So you need to, you know, think about the difference between a closed in room and a bigger, wider room. Well, part of that's going to be the air frequencies. Part of that might be a slight little tiny bit of liveliness in the air. If it's not reverb, then it could be just a little bit of excitement, a little, little, um, you could use as an exciter if you wanted to, that's usually a different thing, but you could try playing with a couple of different things to take it out of the close, which most likely if it's a small room recording, it's going to be more bassy, then you can make it sound a little bit more natural, a little bit smooth it out, drop out a little bit of the bass frequencies and try to make it more level sounding as if you had a microphone a little bit farther away. A, uh, NPR used to have little small rooms that they would record it and the microphones were closer and, you know, welcome to NPR. And it sounded very much like a person in a room with a microphone. But one of the things they started doing is taking that microphone, which is a U87 in many circumstances, very far away from them. And they would sit in a big wide room, which was acoustically treated. And so by doing that, they put air between them. It sounded much more open. And by doing that, by putting the microphone farther away, you didn't have noise floor issues because it was a controlled room, but you had more air, you had more distance, you had more space. And part of that not feeling claustrophobic is because if you go for the whole ASMR thing, autonomy, autonomous sensory meridian response, you're going to feel that proximity effect. It's going to sound like someone is whispering in your ear and talking to you all close. And if that's your thing, fine, more power to you. But if you want natural speech, think about the distance that someone is away from you. That's usually about one meter away when they're talking to you, unless, unless you're worried about COVID, in which case it's, you know, two meters or six feet. But if you are talking about regular speech, as it has always been throughout history, usually you stand about a meter away or about three feet away from someone. And when you do that, there is a more, uh, uh, there's a more of a distance between you and you sound more natural. That's one of the reasons why many microphones are measured at a distance of one meter away. Even though that's not where you use the microphone, that is the distance that will make it sound more natural. It's a, it's a natural distance to have away from someone. That's one of the reasons why. So anyway, hopefully this has given you a little bit of insight as to, geez, what, what in the world was I talking about here? Oh, the pro sound tip. <laughs> you can tell it's been a pretty fun day on a uh, set today. I've had a lot of fun, a lot of running around, a lot of different things. Even though I will tell you, I only had 11 words to capture today. They gave me a run for my money's worth. It was like, oh, let's run this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do another take, another take, another take, another take, another take, and kept on going. But regardless, air has a sound to it. And when you're recording and you want your room to sound bigger and more open, you got to make it sound like there's air frequencies in there and then match your acoustics accordingly. So there you have it, yet again, another episode of the Speed Bumps Podcast. This was episode 15, in case you forgot. Now, I am basically going to call this test done at this time. I'm going to do some number crunching. I'm going to be thinking about the Speed Bumps Podcast, what I want to do, if I want to continue this, if so, under what terms. I have... I did the first 10 episodes where I did a regular Sound Speeds episode on Mondays, and then I did another Sound Speeds episode, which was the Speed Bumps podcast, on Thursday. Now, doing that, interestingly enough, it got me about an average of five to 600 listeners, or views rather, during the, the Speed Bumps episode. Sometimes it was a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, depending on the topic. But one thing it did not do a whole lot of is improve my numbers. It it may have improved my listening time a little bit. My watch hours were definitely there. But you're, if you look at my my genuine trend, my trend of viewing of view time, it would normally go relatively flat based on my episodes and, and seasonally fluctuate a little bit during colder months. My numbers might go up because people are going to be watching more YouTube when the temperature gets colder and, and they're going to drop a little bit during the spring and summer months when it's warmed up because people are going to go to the beach or outdoors and play or do whatever uh, more so. So usually numbers are better for YouTube content creators in the colder months. And that's definitely been the case with, with regards to me. But 
we've been going into colder months and my numbers ever so slightly crept up because I was releasing two videos per week. Some weeks I didn't just release the regular episode on Monday and the Speed Bones podcast on uh, Thursday, but sometimes I also released another video, like a YouTube short or something like that. And suddenly it would tell them, uh, YouTube would say, wow, look at you. You're, you've gone from like releasing four episodes per month to releasing nine plus. That's great. Keep it up. I'm like, you know, this does kind of take a toll on someone that works 60 plus hours a week, plus a drive to and from work. You could see how long I'm in my car during these drives that I do on the Speed Bumps podcast. So, I mean, I have plenty of time to discuss multiple topics and answer questions. So it's like, there is a bit of commute time here. And that's just driving home. And I normally, uh, you see only a, a fraction, a part of my drive home. You don't see the whole thing. I'm sorry I'm rambling, but geez. So I don't know what the future of the podcast is going to be. If it comes back, it's probably going to be an alternating episode thing where I might do a speed bonus episode on Monday, and then I might do the following Monday a uh, regular sound speed video, then another speed bumps on the next Monday, and then another uh, the following Monday it might be uh, another speed bumps. I'm gonna have to determine. That's the way I'm leaning at this time if it comes back at all. I know I've talked to a couple of people about the Speed Bumps podcast. I keep uh, thinking about this because I have some other ideas uh, not on this channel. It would be doing some some solo projects and stuff because there's other information that I have that I could bring more film tricks, more of what I know that I'm, I've done some search for searches for on YouTube and have not found it. So there's a lot of information I could bring to a wider audience if I were to perhaps do another side project. That doesn't mean that I'm going to be ramping down sound speeds. It might mean that it pivots a little bit into more sustainable content that doesn't require me shooting and editing for 20 plus episodes, uh, 20 plus hours every single week. I might end up mixing it up and doing more uh, streamlined content or I don't know. I still am thinking about it. But regardless, if you've enjoyed the Speed Bumps podcast, the end of our test has been completed. And the, the, fifth, the 15th episode today was to test and see how well it went over if I didn't answer a question, but instead brought a, a tip of the trade, a trick of the trade, um, also known as a uh, success story that I had on set. And if this is worthwhile listening to. I'm listening, I'm looking at the total overall watch time. I'm listening to the view, view uh, I'm looking at the views, I'm looking at everything and I'm comparing it to regular Sound Speeds episodes and seeing how it affects my channel overall. And people are like, oh, nope, 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 not interested in speed bumps. That's one thing. If people are like, no, I'm only here for your regular sound content, that's another thing altogether. And I'm gonna have to analyze all this, but I'm gonna be doing so over the next couple of weeks and then determining what I wanna do going forward. It's my decision, and that's basically where I'm going to leave it for now. But thank you for listening to these episodes of the Speed Bumps podcast. And it is now pitch dark out there. So if it looks bright on your on your screen, then this was definitely a good call because it would be completely black if I was using the GoPro Hero 4 or the Pocket, the DJI Pocket 2 or anything like that. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you see the, the, like, the eyes of the rearview mirror. I wonder if I turn this up. I'll probably block the... No, it's not hitting the camera. I don't know. I can't see on the, the viewfinder because it's still going to be adjusting in 30 seconds from now. It's going to finally show me on the screen, but might have to do this in the future if this turns out better for the outro. Um, if I'm driving home, I wonder if this is going to give me better or proper exposure that where I doesn't have the, the, the mask look across my eyes. But anyway, so again, thank you for tuning into these episodes of the Speed Bumps podcast. And if I do this uh, and continue forward, then be sure to tune in the future because if interest dies, then I won't, I won't continue to do it. I'll just go back to what I normally do or pivot again and see what else might work. But regardless, I'll say it again. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hey, this does look better. I just looked at the screen and finally it showed me an image where it's much more properly exposed. I don't know if that's showing up or if this is blown out because it's too bright on the screen, but that actually looks pretty decent on the screen at least i mean it's still garbage quality but i'll tell you this i'll i'll leave it here since i'm i'm rambling on part of me doesn't want to end this episode part of because I, I i it may be the last one part of me is still excited about this whole process if i continue forward 
you know I spend too much money on this channel on things that never make money. Like the, the one of my favorite videos is still to this day me doing and me buying four ribbon microphones for about a hundred dollars each and then destroying them in ways you're not supposed to. I do everything you're not supposed to do to a ribbon microphone and then take it to the next level where it further gets destroyed. And those kinds of things are fun. But when I do a lot of buying of a microphone that ends up being something that's featured in one episode and this channel doesn't make much money, it really doesn't. Uh, it is a passion, uh, you know, to actually just an interest in producing content and, and t teaching and dude, okay, fine, don't let me over. But um, there is a lot of, of things I like doing and one of the things is entertaining. I'm naturally a ham. I've always been someone that, in, uh, that enjoys being in front of the camera, even from a very, very young age. I'm not going to show any of those videos, but I will tell you this. There's, there's a lot of, of fun that I've had in the past when it comes down to uh, performing and acting in front of the camera. Um, and I was an actor, actually, back in the day, if you can imagine that. But um, anyway, so that's one of the reasons I love live streaming. And this here is very much like me having a conversation with with the audience as I'm driving home. It's kind of like a live stream, but without questions or whatever in the comments. But uh, yeah, if I continue forward in the future, I may decide to upgrade this wise camera. I kind of am like, I know it's garbage quality, but at least it provides an image. I watched a video just last night on uh, uh, on on the top images in uh, night color security cameras. And I'll tell you, all of them are priced around a hundred dollars going up to about 200 and some odd dollars. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to have this big humongous box that that's sitting over there and recording on the drive home, but it's kind of what it, what it means to have it. And one of the reasons I got that camera is because the whole thing is small, is small. It's like a GoPro size. It's a little bit skinnier, but it's a little bit taller. So anyway, but um, I'll end now because I have been rambling on. I guarantee my metrics are god awful on this part of the video because you're just hearing stream of conscious. But uh, you know who knows? Some people enjoy watching my live streams when my brain is is dead and I'm sitting there just talking about whatever. And sometimes I've gone down rabbit holes and do dove really deep on sound related topics. If you go back through my live stream archives, which I'll put the playlist right over here, then you'll see that uh, it's. There's all kinds of content on there and I do ramble quite a bit, but sometimes that's when I'll go down a rabbit hole or I'll get hyper on zip fizz or something like that. And then suddenly there's, there's a lot of information that you normally don't see online. That's what I enjoy doing is things that you don't normally hear about or see online because there's not other pros. There's not, not anything that's by any means unique. You know, I'm the only person that knows this stuff. No, there's a lot of other sound pros out there, but just most pros don't choose to share, um, the, the type of topics that I do. So there you go. Not toot my own horn or anything like that, but um, you know, hey, this is me. This is what I do. Sound speeds and uh, ramble and talk about things. Basically just a uh, stream of consciousness and uh, from shooting from the hip. Is that what they call it? Anyway, I'll go ahead and end it at this point. Thank you for watching. Thanks for uh, tuning into this episode. And be sure to tune in if I ever do one of these again for more ramblings, stories, tips from success, questions answered, pro sound tips, and as always, sound advice. If you'd like to ask a sound-related question to be answered in a future episode, send text, audio, or video to ssp at soundspeeds.us. Want to record this outro? Details in the description below. Find us on social media and online at www.soundspeeds.us. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more sound-related content.